bear with me. I'll be back with you in a minute. Yeah. Taking it from the top. I already did my time. I paid for my crime. I already did my time. I paid for my crime. If you're just tuning in, you are in tune to World Jam Global Radio. Kevin Julian on issues today. I paid for my crime. We are live. I already did my time. Going out across the world. In the day, I didn't really care about the system. It was all about survival. It was do or die. I had to. I do have a special guest on today. Young and foolish to stay in school. I learned my lesson. An activist. There was not a man. Blogger. I was good with my hands and very quick on my feet. I was social media commentator. Was all over the and now he's an author. Money, life is so sweet. Now things have changed. The whole game has been rearranged. Tony Sayers has been a long time friend and a dear guest on this show and in a very short while we're going to be talking to him about his new book are you living or just existing i think that's the title i got it wrong the last time but i'm quite sure that he's going to shake me up and put me in line and tell us the title of the book as soon as he comes on stand by Wherever you are in the world, you can catch us on www.worldjamglobalradio.com. I was a drug dealer, so if you're on the smartphones, you can get it on the uh, TuneIn app. I'm not proud of what I had to do. That's why I'm telling my story to you and you. I had to repent. I must admit, I was doing all kind of stupid shit. Now I'll sit back and think it over since I've gotten older. The life I used to live, I wouldn't do. I've been celebrating three years of issues today. No, I was a real force drunk, but I was not looking forward to many more shows to come. Kid had a lot in common. I was the real Terminator, much meaner than Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'd shoot you up and spit you out. Don't forget, you can drop in any questions that you might have on the, in the chat room on the on the website, yep. or just send it direct via inbox or put it on the uh, post on Facebook, on Twitter. All the information is up there available for you. Already did my time. Pay for my crime. But we're not going to waste much more time. We had a very uh, an interrupted start. Sorry, we had a technical difficulty. I suppose is the correct term. Already did my time. But I can assure you, we are now live. Already did my time. I paid for my crime. I'm trying to get this thing. 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 And it's time to introduce my guest, uh, Tony Sayers. Good evening, or is it good morning to you, Tony Sayers? Good morning, Kevin. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just gone one o'clock in the morning here over in Thailand. So, uh, but yeah, I've still got plenty of energy to go. So. Wow. No worries there. Well, the last time we spoke to you, Tony, you were in uh, Cambodia. Yeah, I like to get around. I've been back to the UK in between as well. Um, I was, I, I came back from Cambodia in May last year, and I had some um, some talks around the country on certain different things and catching up with people and seeing family and that sort of stuff and. Uh, but, uh, you know, I like the hot weather, so I, I sort of thought I'd get out by winter, so hence, hence why I'm here. I wouldn't blame you. It's been an absolute freezing winter here in the UK. We've sometimes the temperatures dropping down to minus 11 to, or minus 15 in some places. Has the beast from the east disappeared yet? Yeah, the beast from the east has been and gone, and, 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 and now we've got the pest from the west, which is the wet rain. <laughs> It's interesting how they choose these names, isn't it? It's very fear-based, you know. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, 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 it's the, it's always been that, though, isn't it? It's they've always tried to, to to run fear and terror into the minds and the hearts of people, and having people oh, preparing for the worst. Um, and it's it never turns out to be as bad as they said it was going to be, anyway. Yeah, exactly. So I kind exactly. of take it with a pinch of salt. Just remind us again, Tony, what was you doing while you was out in Cambodia? Because you were doing submission work, wasn't you? 
Yeah, I mean, I was doing a few different things. Um, I was um, helping with one particular family that were very poor, and the the, the father was was disabled. And we there's a few of us there that raised some money for him and put his kids into school. And obviously, people there are you know they they're very poor. Um, but this particular family, he, you know, they were in such a dire state. I mean, they had. Um, their house was getting flooded. They were getting, I mean, it was, wasn't even a house, it was a shack. Um, and, you, you know, they, they were getting snakes like wash up in their, in their, in their, um, underneath the wooden floor. And it was the right, right state and a right mess. And the guy, um, he'd spent, basically, he had no legs. He'd spent all his life um, walking on his arms, making, um, making stuff to sell and selling it on the beach. But, he got to the point where he he couldn't um, use his arms anymore for that because he was getting arthritis, and so he couldn't work. He couldn't support his family. So there was a few of us that stepped in and helped that family, and we bought him like um, a, a moped, a special disabled moped, and with the money raised, and managed to get some some new footing on the house and build a driveway, and um, well, not really a driveway, but like a ramp. Um, so, so that was really good, and I was, you know, I, I managed to write, well, the, write the majority of my book over there. Um, I find it, um, I find it a lot easier to be creative um, in these kind of atmospheres. I, um, I don't know what it is, but I, I seem to have more creative energy that flows through me um, when I'm in Asia. Um, and so, yeah, I was doing the book, and, and then I came back, like I say, I had to see family and um, had some speaking events or, or up and down the country, and and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm back out in Asia again, I'm, I'm training, I've, I've just done a psychotherapy course, um, so I've got my fingers in a few different pies, and uh, yeah, just um, back, and uh, congratulations on the three years, by the way, it's, um, I, I've you know, you've, I've been with you from uh, from almost the start, and like some of the stuff you're putting out is really powerful, and you're doing a great service to the world. So thanks for your service as well, Kevin. Well, thank you very much, Tony. But it is really down to guys like you who agree to appear on the show and tell your story that allows us uh, to bring out this information worldwide. And I think one of the things that I really do um, acknowledge that we have an advantage of here is that we're not regulated or governed by any form of uh, authoritative body. They can't tell us who we speak to. They can't tell us what subject matter we could talk about. And they can't tell us what content we can put into our show. So everything is free. And it actually gives people like yourself an opportunity to be totally open and free with whatever you share. And uh, because I've got no money, they can't sue me. <laughs> That's good. Have you heard, though, that there's... Um, I don't know if you're aware, but there's a lot of alternative media channels that have been taken down from YouTube um, in the last few weeks. Yeah, um, Richie Allen show was one. Um, I was I was on another podcast with um, an American guy um, this morning, and he he's had his channel taken down. And there's also the Natural News website that's that's just been taken down as well. So something's awry. They're they're um, they're a little bit worried about the amount of truth that's starting to surface now. I think so. I don't know how long it will remain unregulated. We just have to. Um, do the best we can whilst it's not and, and push us home well that's the thing I mean the bottom line is whether they take, leave it up or take it down they'll never be able to regulate us so I suppose they could ban us they could block us um, mm. but we, we've been quite fortunate up until now and I think uh, uh, we'll I think we'll continue to be so uh, but in the meantime um, again I'll repeat it's through people like yourself who continue to support us and make yourselves available to share uh, the truth as you believe it to be on this show um, and let's long may it continue so Tony you're, you're in Taiwan at the minute uh, Thailand Thailand why did I say Taiwan is that tea litter again isn't it <laughs> right. I'm giving you I'm giving you some real grief today with the name of my book <laughs> the country that I'm in oh, <laughs> I'm <laughs> actually you got you got the name of my book right correct twice so you did well I got it I got <laughs> it right you twice you fell down on the name of the country this time <laughs> <laughs> well well that's a big improvement but um so what are you actually doing in Thailand at the minute is it just a rest respite or, or are, are you on a mission is it work taking place there um I'm 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 gonna start a second book 
Um, I've been doing a lot of blogging, researching as normal. Um, I'm, I'm actually training. Um, I'm going to continue training on um, some uh, alternative work that I'm doing here as well. That's that's the reason that I'm I'm here. Um, but yeah, I just I just use the time to really yeah to get creative and and put out truth um, in in however way I can. Like you know, I've got my YouTube channel which I do vlogs on. I'm doing about two a week now, so I'm really motivated to do that. I'm talking about you know different aspects of what's holding humanity back and health and alternative health and what we can do to improve that and personal development. I'm really into personal development at the moment. Okay. Um, healing the inner child, you know, really the last year and a half I've, I've also spent a lot of time, you know, going into my emotional side and, and really working on that to become, you know, stronger in myself and I think, um, I think that's something that people tend to avoid, particularly men. Um, we have a, we have a culture where when we, there's lots of people that get gym memberships and stuff, but there's there's like not many people that want to do the inner work as well. Yeah. Um, I, I was the same. I, I you know two years ago I was I, I was like well I'm all right you know I've got a few things holding me back but who hasn't right? But um, you know I was shown that you know if we work with those aspects of ourselves and, and we can become even greater and become stronger and and and. You know, it gives us. It just gives us more, more strength to go on and be the best, better versions of ourselves. So I've been doing a lot of that as well, which hasn't always been easy. You've just spent uh, uh, quite some time out in Cambodia, and now you're out in Thailand. Um, mm -hmm. Has some of what you've seen out there motivated you and inspired you to to change your life? Um. <laughs> to be honest with you, um, it, it's living in the UK that motivates me and, and it's likely to, uh, to change my life. Um, when I'm here, um, you know, I'm very fortunate, I'm very blessed um, that I live, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a, I've got a place that overlooks the ocean here and, you know, it's a lot cheaper. I mean, I look at what I'm paying for this compared to what, where my, my flat is in Essex and you know, my flat in Essex is double to what this is, so it's it's a no-brainer really to be here for me. Um, but I, you know, it's not for everyone. I, I I enjoy the sun. The Thai people, you know, they call it the land of the smiles, and and that's very true. And um, yeah, I I think you know we all. I think it's important that we're happy where we we where we live, and I think when we're happy where we live, we can thrive and. Um, and I, I just, for, for me, I, I you know, I, I, I just find the UK hard. I, I feel like um, I'm being watched all the time. There's surveillance everywhere. There's police, like, extorting the public for no reason all the time. And, you know, I, I just I just find it, um, it's become more and more suppressive there for me. And, and like anyone, I guess, I like freedom. And there's not many places left in the world where you can really experience the level of freedom that you can in, in Southeast Asia. Um, I mean, literally, I mean, especially with Cambodia, I mean, I, I read it's the second most, um, you know, out, outlandish country in the world, you know. Um, so there's literally anything goes there, which which can, which can be have its problems as well. But, you know, I like to feel free. And, and when I've got cameras watching me and, and like all that kind of stuff it just I don't know it stresses me out so it's actually living in the UK that inspired me more to to come out here rather than the other way around okay so uh, on that you uh, just a short while ago you mentioned uh, the health the well-being um, and and you know the working out internally as well as externally um, so I suppose one of the reasons why I ask you that question is that I go out to the Caribbean quite a lot uh, it's where my mother and my father live and uh, my father's just celebrated his 80th birthday. Uh, my uncle is 93. And wow. every every time I go out there, I'm seeing people that are living older and longer and healthier lives than I've, I've ever seen here in the UK. I think I, I, I don't know anybody um, in the UK. I don't personally know anybody in the UK who are in their 90s. I'm not saying that there ain't any. I'm just saying that I yeah. don't know any. 
Um, but when I go out to the Caribbean, I, I, I see many. I, I met my great aunts um, who are twins, and I met them when they were 108 years old. Wow, you know? that's amazing. Um, and, and, and no, they, they, they were bedridden and they couldn't do much for themselves at that age, uh, but they could still talk, they could still see. Uh, they still they could still remember faces. They 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 weren't trained with dementia or anything else like that. They still remembered their family members that were around them and coming to visit them, and they could still tell you stories of how things used to be back in the day, so to speak. Um, mm. And I've met uh, several other family members who have who have lived a, a very long and fruitful life. Um, I've, there are family members out there, for example, who are in their eighties. Um, who are still going around their gardens picking out their own fruit to, to, to eat and, and stuff, you know, um, and doing a lot of things around the house for themselves. Um, and some of them mm. do get support from family members, their grandchildren and stuff like that who pop around to visit and, and help keep the garden clean and, and that, the kind of heavier work, so to speak. But these, these people still do stuff for themselves. And I, I, I don't see much of that here in the UK. Because here in the UK, once they get to, to their 60s, we're already looking to farm them off to, to uh, you know, old people's homes somewhere. You know, they're, 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 we're already trying to find ways to discard them and, and, and take the inheritance money. Um, yeah, and, exactly. And I think, um, I think just, uh, you met, just, just to pick up on a point that you met there, that, that you made there, is that um, you, you mentioned that they grow their own food. Um, I mean, you, you look at the quality of the food in the UK right now. I mean, it's, I mean, it can really barely be classed as food in some cases. I mean, like the fruit and vegetables, even if you buy organic, it's sprayed with pesticides, herbicides. These are cancer causing properties. Um, I, I mean, like, you know, you think about how crazy it is. You see the pictures of these people in those big bee suits spraying the crops so they don't get the poison on them, yet we're eating it? Hang on a minute, that's, <laughs> there's something wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, go on. No, I was just going to say, you're, you're quite right. When you see them covered up with, with, with helmets, uh, every part yeah. of their clothing covered, um, while they go and spray that, and then that's out in the supermarket, and, and, and we're just open to anything that comes from that. Absolutely. No yeah, protection I mean, whatsoever. It, yeah, I mean, sugar and, and like, alcohols everywhere and, and yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, really, supermarkets should have a warning sign when you're going to them, but yeah. it, it, unless you do the research and you, you, you look into what's in these, um, you know, what's in this, these food products, then you're just going to go along with it, and that's what's happening. People are going to the supermarket, they're buying all, all the cheap craps always on offer. You know, you walk into like an Asda's or a Sainsbury's, in the entrance, you've got the one pound big um, box of Quality Street and the, the big bags of like, I mean, don't get me wrong, my diet's not perfect, but I'm, the point I'm making is it, it seems like all the junk food is really cheap. And, and if you want to buy organic, you, you need to, you need to like take out a small mortgage or something. Yeah. Um, and and you know so we're we're eating very poorly. I mean, you look at the states as well. I mean, the GMOs. I mean, the, the obesity there. So it, I'm a big believer of uh, medicine be thy food and food be thy medicine. And um, I think the food's really poor. And and I think the stress as well. You mentioned that in in the Caribbean, they're they're living long lives. They're out in their garden still. Well, I mean, you look at the amount of hours people have to work here and uh, you, how, how hard they have to grind. It's, it's no surprise that, you know, if they're not getting the right fuel as well. See, see we get told that, that people are living longer. They're, they're not. They're dying longer. Yeah. You're, getting, you're getting people. And, and like, I'm in my late 30s now. I mean, I've got people, people my age that have, have, have died, have had heart attacks. Yeah. I've had people... People with, um, you know, diabetes, heart disease, they're my age. And, and they give them these, these pharmaceuticals. And, and then, of course, that, that makes the drugs companies a lot of money and then makes them customers for life. So, so, all right, they might get an extra couple of years at the end of it, but they've been sick for 30 of them, <laughs> you know? Here's the thing. I'm only going to just throw this out there, right? I'm really just going to throw this out there. I've, I think five, five or six times now in the last few years I've been out to the Caribbean and I go out, I go out regularly recently and I'm back out there again June this year. But I've, I've never come across a kid with ADHD. 
Interesting. I've never come across a kid with ADHD who's been medicated for mental health related issues at a young age. And going back, and I'm 56 years old, Tony, so uh, born in 1961, and I've seen many things. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was younger, um, you know, they, 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 they relate a lot of uh, paranoia to cannabis smoking and that kind of thing. But uh, in all of my years growing up, and we were, I, we were heavy cannabis smokers in my community, I only know of two individuals of my generation uh, that were hospitalized uh, with mental health-related issues uh, that could be wow. considered to be in paranoia. Two. Yeah. And I lived in a very predominantly black, heavy-smoking community. So mm. where I work in engineering, we talk about change point management. So the questions I, ha I would have to ask is, what changed? What changed mm. to make, uh, to make that, that, that statistical numerification uh, increase by almost 90-odd percent to where you're now mm. looking at the majority of individuals being hospitalized for paranoid schizophrenia or mental health-related issues are now young and not old? Mm. Mm. What changed? Well, it's the vaccines, isn't it? That's what changed. I mean, in the US, it's like, I think it's 60 vaccinations by the age of six or something. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know if you've looked into some of the, the stuff that's in these vaccines, like mercury and it's, it's you know, it, it's a real it's a real deep rabbit hole. But, you know, I would encourage any of your listeners to, to research the the amount of toxins that are in vaccinations these days, um, and and I think that's why all the all these childhood behaviours have appeared out of nowhere, along with the food and stuff. Absolutely, I mean it is a combination. It's not just any one thing. But I'll give you another example. I, I was also a qualified chauffeur back in the eighties, and uh, I worked for a very rich man um, in Piccadilly, um, just opposite the Ritz, uh, the Ritz Hotel. He he owned he owned uh, his own merchant bank. Um, and, he, and he was adamant that ev every one of his members of staff had to have the flu jab. Now, I'd never had mm. the flu jab in my life. And furthermore, flu was not something that I was afflicted with at any time. You know, mm. at this current moment in time, I've now gone over five years without visiting a GP or taking a day off work, right, for yeah. sickness, right? But the one and only time that I was forced to take a flu jab because my boss, my employer, uh, insisted that I did is the one and only time I got the flu mm, exactly it just happened to my dad just recently um, he, he he had the same yeah he, he, he got the flu after the flu jab it's like hello I, I, you know I, 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 I don't think a lot of people will get that and they, there you have it you've got a, you've got these people that do this thing year in and year out you have companies that insist that they, they, they their workforce need to take this and because it was his bank and he was rich uh, he was insistent nobody was working for him without having this flu jab but it caused mm. created more sickness in the workplace than it prevented um, yeah. and I suppose we've got to be asking ourselves what are they basing this the evidence of what they're producing or forcing us to take what are they what are they basing it on um back in the day i remember uh, when they used to produce medication or or a new or the new vaccine or they they trialed it for 10 years or whatever it was um and so that they can actually t check out the longevity of it they can look at what the impact of it and the effects of it what the long term effects of it were um and they don't do that anymore do they Everything, yeah. every, everything is rushed through uh, for, for market reasons, for, for marketable reasons, for, for, for financial reasons, because people want to make a quick win. And, and, and even mm. some of the results um, are fabricated in order to push things through. And even when you watch some of the movies, and I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a conspiracy theory type of guy, right? So I'm not mm. raising conspiracy theory here. But what I will say is every time you watch a movie that has some of these weird kind of things going on, you bet. You better bet your bottom dollar that they've got the idea from somewhere. Mm, yeah, you know, absolutely. when you're talking about people being wiped out by this vaccine or wiped out by this or or this particular event taking place, you know, I, I believe that you know the idea has come from somewhere. Something has happened to, to trigger off this 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 thought process that says, "So let's make let's make a film." Even if they're not going to be honest and tell us, I, I can't help but believing it. You could take that right back to AIDS, can't you? 
Well, I mean, you look at it, right? How many of these killer diseases have we had over the years? I mean, it's like Ebola, SARS, pig, swine flu. Um, you know, the list goes on, and there's always there's always a quick vaccine for it, isn't there? Yeah. Um, it, it's, you know, it, yeah. I would just encourage people to, you know, if you if your company's telling you to to vaccinate or the, the school is telling you to vaccinate the school puts so much pressure on i mean do you know right in australia now if you don't vaccinate your children you don't get your benefits really? that is for, that is forced vaccination by proxy forced vaccination and that can never be right that can never be right now ask yourself this why in a so-called free society would they force a parent to, to vaccinate their child. Something's not right, conspiracy theorist or not. <laughs> Absolutely, and it's, I don't buy into the conspiracy theory as such, uh, but what I will say is uh, we're, we're fully aware of, of world domination and those that are trying mm -hmm. to dominate the world. It's, any fool can see that um, by, yeah. by, by the way that we're governed. Um, mm -hmm. I, I suppose if, if you take something as, uh, as, as silly as Donald Trump, that was destined to happen for what's about to take place, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. You know, um, and 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 uh, who would have thought, right, that D Donald Trump would have actually won an election? A um, uh, 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 sexist, racist thug who 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 can't string a, a, a sentence together without looking like a buffoon, right, is now speaking for the world. Well, I mean, it just, I, 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 honest, I think we've had this conversation on previous shows, Kirby, and I think, like, I mean, you just look at that as an example, how people can still think politics is, is somehow uh, beneficial or... Or even or, necessary uh, anymore. Yeah, I mean, like, like you say, out of 330 million people in the States, they come up with Trump yeah. and Hillary Clinton. Yeah. I mean, how... How does that represent any kind of democracy or choice? It's an illusion. Yeah. You know, these people are hand-picked. They, 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 they know who's going to go into office. And we, they were either going to be governed by a crook or they were going to be governed by a crook. But they had no, no choice in the matter. They were going to be governed by a crook. Yeah, but you know what's frustrating about it is the hysteria now that's, that, that surrounds these elections. I mean, first of all, there seems to be an election every month now, yeah. um, whether it's the UK or the US. And what they've cleverly done, and I can see this, is that people were starting to lose faith in politics, rightly so, because it's a sham and it's a charade. But they saw that people were starting to lose um, faith in it. So what they what they've done, and it's a very it's genius, really, is they've made it like a Big Brother show. Yes. So you, reality so you TV. Have, so you have these politicians now that are now celebrities, right? And, and the, the mass hysteria that gets created, I mean, it's like an energy harvest. It's like a big ritual in and of itself. So, so they've made the, the Trumps of this world, the, the Clintons, and they've made it into like a big reality TV show where, you know, they go in for that. Where is it where they talk at each other at the end, towards the end, and it's like a big standoff. And it's like, oh, did you see that she said this and he said that? And like all the time, I've got a feeling that people that are really pulling the strings that, you know, I'm talking the weapons manufacturers, the bankers, yeah. you know, the shell government, they are sitting around their banquet tables laughing their head off at, at, at us putting our little cross in a box every four years thinking that that's going to change anything. Um, and and I don't know I don't know when the penny's going to drop for people. Um, it really frustrates me. It's it reminds us of that old card trick that people used to play. I don't know if you remember it. Uh, I surely do. It's uh, where you you have the you have the deck of cards and and you look at the pack and you see the ten of diamonds um, and you put the ten of diamonds um, somewhere in the middle of the pack. Right, and you put the pack of, put the pack in your in your pocket or whatever it is, and then you'll say to you'll say to the person now, uh, I want you to think to I want you to think of of a suit, uh, red or black, and they they say 
they say black, but you really wanted them to say red, right? Because if you pick the ten of diamonds, they go they go black, right? Okay, so that leaves the red then, right? So hearts or diamonds. So they pick hearts, and you go right. So that that leaves diamonds, right? High or low, and they go <laughs> low, and you say right. Well, that leaves high then, doesn't it? So <laughs> from from ten to king, which one? Well, they go king. Well, that, that leaves you know ten to ten to jack and and queen to an ace. Well, what would you want then? And until you've got them pinned down to the ten of diamonds, and you go right. <laughs> okay, turn over the card, and here's the ten of diamonds. You know, and and that's that's what's happening to us. We're actually yeah. being directed to the ten of diamonds because they've already they've already picked the ten of diamonds. It was always going to be the ten of diamonds. There was never an exactly. alternative choice. It was going to be the ten of diamonds. You know, exactly. And and we're walking uh, away thinking that we've got a victory. Exactly. Yeah, it's the illusion of choice. You're right. But I I, I actually uh, I mean I'm at the stage now where I find I find it embarrassing. Um, and, and I really mean that. I, I actually find it embarrassing that hum, humanity continues to believe these people, continues to hang off every word they say, and and ultimately continues to hand over their power. Mm. Uh, there's always war from these people. There's always tax evasion. Mm -hmm. There's always stories of, you know, abuse and that kind of thing that surface there's there's always this stuff and there, there is always letdowns and it's in, i'm embarrassed by it i really am I, I i feel like god if you if you cannot see that this is all an illusion by now and these people are owned by the weapons manufacturers the bankers and shadow governments then I, I, you know i i don't know i don't know what else to say about it it's it's it's, I know people want to look for someone to um, change what's going on here, but looking at the people that created this chaos is not not the answer. But probably not. But still, some people would say that we we, we couldn't live without some sort of leadership. We we, we couldn't. Well, we we wouldn't manage. We wouldn't cope. Things wouldn't get done. Well, I mean, this is this is like this this crops up a, a, like what 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 do the I mean? Imagine tomorrow there was no government. Mm. I mean, like God, I think it would be great. <laughs> imagine, <laughs> okay, all right, let let let's let's play devil's advocate, right? There may be a bit a period of chaos to start with for a little while. Yeah, I'm willing to risk that chaos to get rid of these clowns, yeah. right? I, I don't mind a bit of chaos for maybe six months a year maybe even two years if it means that future generations can have a different way so think about it right like the roads would still get built that you know all these things would still happen we would just i mean it, 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 if we feel if our level of consciousness as a race is that we don't feel that um having psychopathic leaders um, if we if we feel we can't we need psychopathic leaders to wipe our backsides our own level of consciousness I mean it's like that's that's kind of like uh, you know and I talk about this in my book it's like it's basically what we have here is we have the the babysitters from hell <laughs> looking after us yeah. and and you know that that that's what we're dealing with. So it's like, hmm, I'm I'm willing to risk maybe trying a slightly risky route that hasn't maybe been tried before. But that's, um, but is that not just born of the sheer frustration and dissatisfaction from having an absolutely uh, it's born, unacceptable it's born, standard of, it's, of governing? It's born from a mindset that. I, did, I haven't always have, but again, I talk about it in my book, is the, the belief in authority. When, when you are born, this is my opinion anyway, when you are born on this planet, by the very grace of God or universe or the creator, whatever you're believing, yeah. you, you already have freedom. You, already, you are your own authority. You're, you are a sovereign being. Yeah. Uh, and nobody... 
Nobody. As long as you're as long as you're living by universal law, which is cause no harm, cause no loss to other beings. As long as you're living by that rule, that's the only rule that you have to live by. Every other rule is man made and it's null and void, basically. Um, and so we we are we are born sovereign and it's the very belief in authority that is holding us back. It would have to be uh, agreed by most when you consider um, 5% of the world um, is, is, is well, or 95% of the monies of this world is owned by 5% or whatever those stats are because the bottom line is there are, there are so many billionaires um, but yet there are billions and billions of, of poor people living in poor countries in poor conditions um, while, while the rich get richer and the fat get fatter so to speak but when when you look at how we are being led uh, we've we've always been led somehow but what do you think was the start of bad leadership because oh, I, I think there's always been leadership, hasn't it? Even if you even if you go back to the Indians and the, and the African tribes, they've always had a chief or or you know a, a council of so to speak that uh, that uh, that uh, upkept the morals and principles of of the village. And that's the key point that those two words that you mentioned there, morals and principles, those those were there in every, in all the in all the and these they all, they weren't all perfect. These these um, these tribes and these, um, you know, these ancient tribes, they had their issues. But, you know, I mean, if you look at the Native Americans, for example, yeah. you know, they were all about morals and principles. Yeah. I mean, they, they, used to, they used to plan for seven generations ahead of themselves. Right? We don't even plan for, for our generation <laughs> that we're living in. Yeah. And, and this is the level of consciousness that they, that, and that's why ultimately they were slaughtered. Um, 100 million of them, because they had, they knew spiritual law and they adhered by it, and they knew how how this universe operated, and they knew what they could do and what they couldn't do, and they knew about natural law or cause and effect, do no harm to others, and um, yeah, and and yeah, I guess, I mean, I don't know because I didn't live with them, but from what I've read is that there were leaders, but they were very much. All had to be in agreement. So I, I you know, in are they called the wigwams, the yeah. the, the tent things. Yeah. So I, I, re- I, I don't know if you've heard this, but they have, um, I, and I can't remember the name, but they have in their meetings they have a stick, right? And and the stick would be passed around to everyone in the circle until they've had this their their what their they say they've had the they say. And if someone didn't agree, the stick would ca- would carry on being passed around between people until, and only until they all came to a, a, a joint agreement, all of them. And that is the difference between what we're seeing now with where you get one person says, right, we're doing this, even if you didn't vote for it, tough luck. Mm-hmm. That's not That's not consent by all. That's just, you know, this is the point. Like, if I... Okay, if I don't vote Conservative and I vote Labour, I'm still governed by by rules that I didn't agree with. So that that's not that's not freedom. That's coercion on on their part to, towards me because I didn't I didn't want that. But in those in those cultures, they all ha- yeah, they were leaders, but those leaders were of a higher consciousness and they were, as you said, based based in morals and principle. And that is the that is the key words that are missing. These people. Are only interested in more war, in more money, in more um, just in more wealth for themselves, and 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 what's in it for them? You know, I don't want people like that um, leading me, and and neither should anyone else. And and it doesn't matter who stands up because they're they're all the same, and they are all the same. They they might present themselves as as the good guy, your Bernie Saunders, your Jeremy Corbyn, but they all do a U-turn right at the end when it matters. Mm. And, and you know, we just don't ever seem to, like, learn from that. Um, and I, I don't understand it, and that's why I said I get embarrassed by it, because I see the hysteria of flag-waving people at Trump, and, and I'm thinking, man, I wouldn't even let this, I wouldn't even let this guy walk my dog. 
Do you know what I mean? Let let alone run the, <laughs> run the country, run the United States of America, and and you've got all these people cheerleading him, and it's like, oh my god, am I really, you know, am I really part of this? Yeah. And I don't know. Maybe that comes across a bit arrogant, but it's just, you know, it is frustration because I know, you know, I, I innately know that we as humans, as a species, are so much better than this. We can be so, we've got so much unlocked potential. We've got so much greatest greatness within us, um, you know. But we've just been divided, divided. We've been pitted off against each other. And Muslims against Christians, against blacks, against whites, against gays, against straights, and you never hear, you never hear in the news how, you know, perhaps a Muslim and a Christian got together and they and they did a great thing for their community, and that does go on. Absolutely. And, you know, we just divide and conquer all the time, and 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 while we're battling against each other, these people will continue to thrive, and it it upsets me because I know. Um, we we've got so much more potential than just being the rats for these for these people. I'm not a rat, and I don't subscribe to being a rat, and and neither should anyone else. And giving our power over to, like I say, these babysitters from hell is is really the last thing that we should be doing. Do you know there are two there are two things um, that stop us um, uniting as, as as a people across all nations. Uh, two things that I think stand out for me in particular um, propaganda and hate um, yeah propaganda is is what they use uh, to keep us separated and and hate mm. is what we tend to generate within ourselves about those that they they, they tell us the propaganda about um, and you know you're, you're right when you talk about Muslims and Christians who both who both happen to believe in God just in a different way um, and and I think there is no there is no civilization known to this planet um, who hasn't believed in a form of God, um, even without coming into contact with one another. So so mm -hmm. God is very real to civilization, in one way or another. He's whatever you choose or choose not to believe, there is a God that is real to this world. Um, and and a lot of those principles that come from religion um, are, are normally good principles, but uh, are mistreated and misrepresented by those who have the authority uh, over it all. So we, mm. we, we continue to be misled, whether it be in, in religion, whether it be in government, parliament, where, where, you, where we are here in the UK, or in any other, and it's uh, even a company, for example. Um, you, you go into the workplace, and you, when you go into the workplace, you go in there with a, a, a sense of... Um, motivation, enthusiasm, optimism, expectation, um, anticipation. You have all of these things going on inside of you as to what, might, what this might lead to. And, you, know, you, you, you go in there at one level and you know, after a couple of days you start thinking to yourself, well, I could really make a difference here, I could do this or I could do that, I could really see this company. It, and before long, you find yourself caught up in the internal politics of what the management or the way that management want you to see the company and, and, its, and its role in the community or whatever. And all of this stuff that you first walked in there with, all of this optimism, all of this anticipation, all of this expectation, all of this motivation, all of this heartfelt community concern and spirit seems to just get dwindled away as you get caught up in the mechanics of, of, of the conglomerate machine, so to speak. But mm. when you spread that out into the world now, as we live, right, is that not what's happening nation by nation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, could, you use a good analogy there. Yeah, it, it gets diluted that, you know, you think about it, right? It, it, if you take it down to like a, like a microscopic level, if you're in your community, generally, well, I don't know what it's like in your community, but... Generally, people were, are okay with each other. You know, you don't see all this this hate everywhere. Um, but but you know, it just it just gets ramped up. And I mean, a few years ago, I, I mean, I'm sick to death with all this like Muslim bashing that, that goes on in the UK. I mean, the, talk about hypocrisy, right? You know, all these all these people, um, all these people that 
you know, say this about Muslims and, and Islam and, and and immigrants. This is the big one. Mm-hmm. They, they say, oh, oh, immigrants are coming here and they're not speaking English and they're taking our jobs. These are the people, same people that go over to Spain, cannot speak a word of Spanish, mm-hmm. go into a, um, a restaurant, expect to, to have Carlsberg on tap and, a fr- and an English fried breakfast. Like, these are the same people that are saying that. I mean, and, and get drunk and come outside and puke all over people's... <laughs> absolutely. I mean, talk about hypocrisy. A million, there's a million Brits over there. I bet you could count on probably a few hands how many could actually speak Spanish. And um, anyway, that was going off on a bit of a tangent, but I just wanted to point out the hypocrisy there. But but yeah, you're absolutely right. It's divide and rule. It's it's like dilute dilute this potential unity I mean that's their worst nightmare isn't it if we all got together and said you know okay you you're a Muslim you're a Christian you're you don't believe you're an atheist you're a spiritual person you're a black person you're a white person you're gay you're straight you know what it doesn't matter because we're all in this together it doesn't actually matter so what we do is we just put our beliefs to one side and we'll work together to create a better community for all where we can celebrate our different cultures and our different beliefs in a way that doesn't um, alienate people, but we, we're interested in, in it. We want to learn about it. But they they have turned that and they've they've made it into something that they can use against us. Do you know, you know, Tony? I I, I regularly go to a, a place called the AT7 here in Coventry. It's a, it's a, it's a leisure centre. And uh, one of my most therapeutical moments is is the steam room and the sauna, and I go oh, I, love I go I regularly. Went, I, went. Did you? I go there yeah. regularly, um, and about two three years ago, um, I started going when, when they when they first opened up the new steam room in the in the eighty seven because I used to go to the Coventry Leisure Centre at first, and then I started coming up to the eighty uh, seven here. But I did the same thing. Um, at Coventry Leisure Centre, as I was doing here at the 80, as I'm doing here at the 87, but there's a there's a group of us. There's about eight or nine of us who meet regularly in that steam room, uh, men, and there's a couple of women that go in there as well. And out of that group of people, there's uh, me, um, and there's probably a couple more that are Christian. There's about three or four that are that are Muslim. There's there's two that are definitely atheist, right? Um, and there's a there's, there's a there's a there's a Scientologist. Uh, mm. who, who, who you know who believes in the evolutions and the science of it all, but we regularly sit in in that steam room and we talk about the current things that are going on around the world, right? Mm. Um, and and we always seem to agree mm. with each other, yeah. right? But when you start talking about the you know because there are out of these Muslims there are there are people there from from from. Asia or African continents who have a Muslim contingents. Uh, they're all white, black, uh, Indian. There's a real mixture of us sitting in that steam room, right? And nobody, nobody is um, offended by what is said mm. by another. Uh, we speak openly, we speak bluntly, we speak honestly, but we all come out of there with a, with a, with a better understanding of each other. And, uh, and, 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 and now, if you was to put that on a wider platform, right, you just couldn't see that happening in the House of Parliament, could you? I mean, I, I just want to say this. When they gave us Sky TV, right, um, and I, at one point, I've, I've never seen it before, but when I first started watching uh, Prime Minister's Question Time um, and the Houses of Parliament started to be an open thing that you could see on TV, because when I was young, we never saw any of that. You know, mm. uh, and the politicians were the people that you you really held with high regard. Um, they, they, you know, they had the most respect in in the world, so to speak. The irony. <laughs> but then you started watching these prime ministers' questions, and you started watching these political debates in in in, in the House of Commons and Parliament, and then you you just you'd see a, a a whole string of name calling and 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 and, and, and petty people bashing and. And, 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 and instead of trying to put a point across, they were trying to be condescending to one another, calling each other names and, 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 and trying to make jokes about each other and, you know, trying to make each other look stupid and see who could make the, each other look the worst and sound the worst or uh, see who can get more people to laugh at the guy that's speaking. And, and I started to watch it and I thought, 
that's no difference to me and my mates in the playground, really, is it? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And, and yet these guys yeah. are getting paid sixty and eighty thousand and a hundred thousand pound a year to do this. And these They're are the just same... giving themselves a pay rise, didn't they? Yeah, seventy-seven grand or but something. But these are the same people that make the decisions that make the world go round. Yeah, right. I know, and we we want to continue to to give them power. <laughs> and and you ask yourself, which one's more entertaining, Jeremy Kyle or the Houses of Commons? And I'll tell you what, yeah. that it's a fifty-fifty for me because there's not much difference yeah. between the two. The behaviour pattern between the two ain't much different, right? You watch right. Jeremy Kyle on a, on a, on a Monday or a Tuesday morning or whatever it is, and and, and I do watch it. I, I'm a sad git. I do watch it. My wife is laughs. That your at guilty me. Pleasure, is that's it, my Kevin? that's my guilty pleasure. <laughs> but I I do watch it and I laugh a lot. I don't watch it because I take it seriously. I actually, I actually laugh a lot. And I, and I say to people, even in my workplace, I say, this program is going out around the world. And people think that that's what most of us in England are like. Right? Mm -hmm. they're, what, they're watching this, and this is a representation of who we are and what we're meant to be. Right? People are watching these chavs and these guys coming in with, the, with their walks and their pants around their knees. And, you know, you know, uh, and, and, and it, that's a representation of this country. We're exporting that. Right? Mm -hmm. Worldwide and say to people, This is us, this is Britain. But when you when you compare that to the Houses of Parliament, the mentality, the behaviour, right, isn't much different. No. Totally agree. Right? <laughs> so where did they get the idea from Jeremy Kyle? I reckon they got it from the Houses of Parliament. Yeah, probably. Right, legit. It's funny it's funny because um I remember I was I must have been about ten years old. And um, I walked past the TV one day and I saw all these people shouting at each other. Now I know it was question time. <laughs> and, 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 I re and I remember saying to, I can't remember whether it was my mum or dad, I was like, what's that? And they were like, oh, these people are the ones that run the country. And I remember at 10 years old thinking, you're having a, you're having a laugh at you. <laughs> these are the people that run the country. <laughs> Absolutely. They call each other names. They they tell mm. they tell jokes about each other. You know, they, I, I I just didn't get it, and so I got intrigued. I actually started to watch it more often, Tony. I uh, I made yeah. a point of watching Question Time and the Houses of Parliament more often, and the more I but watched that's it, it, isn't it? It's, it's 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 like a Big Brother show. You know, that's what it's it's like. It's it's like entertainment now. It's I don't know. It's if it wasn't so tragic, it would be funny because, unfortunately, those people are, are then dropping bombs. They're, they're, on, they're um, making on, the decisions that rule yeah. the world. I mean, uh, what, 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 I mean, I was so shocked when I went back to the UK last year. The amount of homeless people in my hometown really upset me. I mean, um, South End in Essex. Yeah. Uh, you know, that literally the high street was, was lined with people. Now... For, for, for people that are living in the UK permanently, it's probably been a slow process and you don't notice it as much. But for me, I hadn't been in the UK for two years almost. And, and when I come back, oh my God, it was such a big difference. And uh, yeah, it, break, it, breaks, it, you know, it breaks my heart to see so many people that are, are struggling like that. So, and then you've got these clowns doing that, giving themselves pay rises, 77 grand, the latest one. And, and shouting at each other and what, falling asleep in the Houses of Parliament. I mean, you know, they're taking the pee. And, and, then, and, 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 and then it's voting time and, they, yep, and they're putting their hands up, but they haven't heard a word that's been said. Yeah, and then we're giving them more power. I mean, what are we doing? What are we doing? It's like these people don't give a sh You know, they don't care. You know, go, going, really ba going back care. to this homeless thing, uh, Tone, I, I don't know if you know, but I, 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 I ran my own homeless charity for a direct I do for know, yeah. Nine you, years. Uh, and I still I still work with it, and uh, I, I stepped down in 2013 because I was going through a difficult time with me and my wife. Uh, but mm. I, I went back to it last year. Uh, when I went back to it, um, the shock that I got: a uh, people that were that I was serving four years ago were still in the same predicament, but in Coventry there was never that many rough sleepers on the street. Um, we had a lot of homeless people in Coventry, but they were traveling, um, and there was a lot of sofa surfers um, back then. Um, but now if you go into the town center um, on any given day, the amount of people that are still, that are sleeping on the streets, uh, it's phenomenal. 
and 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 mm. and that has been repeated right across the country. So I'm I'm not surprised that you've seen an increase in South End. Um, because but you know what, right? Even more disturbing than that is that they can now be arrested or fined, yes. fined when they haven't got they, any. They've, they've got they no money. Got they've got any nothing. Money, nope. and they can be fined. I mean, seriously, what is what is this? What is going on? What are we doing? <laughs> and 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 we have a government that's making it more difficult for them to a find somewhere to live, um, accommodate them in any way, or support them to be able to find somewhere to live. And, and what we've got is an absolute continuous breakdown in the family infrastructure. I, I'm going to raise this issue because I've, I, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not even sure if that's where we were meant to go, where we were going to go. No, I agree with it. Right? Yeah, it's, good. But, it's an important one. But, but I'm looking at social care and social services and the way that they bring, they, they're breaking down the family, putting children in care until they're 18, and then chucking them out onto the streets at the age of 18, <laughs> And, and these children have been brought up with frustration, bitterness, resentment that they've been taken away from their families at a young age, um, have lost their identities, and now they've been sent out into the world to go and find themselves. And you know how yeah. many of those people who, are, who have come from care you're finding now as drug addicts, alcoholics, or homeless? The number mm, is absolutely know. multiplying. I've worked at the Salvation, oh, I worked at the Salvation for four years. And do you know what? The one thing that used to shock me was when a social worker used to turn up for an interview, right, with a client that they are just about to relieve, release from care. You're telling me you've had this person in care for 12 years, 13 years, 15 years, whatever, however long you've had them, and now that they've reached 18, you, you've got nowhere for them to go. You've got no move-on plan for them, so your, your next best bet is to bring them into a homeless hostel full of heroin-taking addicts. Mm. Yeah. It's, uh, what 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 chance has that kid got? Uh, it, it's, it breaks my heart. And then uh, you've got a, you you've got a queen that sits on a golden chair with a golden hat. She owns most of the land in the world. Um, she could, you know, she's not even paying any taxes. And and then she, we're going. She could she could, she could she can take one of those diamonds off the crown and and and, and eradicate homeless in a stroke. And, and and then we're out we're out on the streets worshiping her when she has a birthday, and there's people in her country lining the streets homeless, and she's giving us lectures on austerity. I mean, it's crazy. This world is crazy. What we what we accept as normal is is absolutely crazy. Honestly, know, and and it's all it's all it all goes back to that belief in authority. Because if we didn't believe that that someone who has just happened to have been born into a family has more rights than others, then, you know, there'd be a more equal playing field and we wouldn't buy into the the, the joke that it all is. Um, but for some reason, we haven't managed to figure it out yet that just because you're born into a certain family should give you, shouldn't give you any more rights than the man who, who's, who's collecting rubbish, rubbish bins on, on a Monday morning. Mm. You know, he's no better than the Queen. Um, in actual fact, he probably is better than the Queen, but that's for another yeah. show. But um, but you know, this is this is this is again that disease mindset of a belief in authority. It's Stockholm syndrome. You know, you have. Have you heard about Stockholm syndrome? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is where for, for listeners that don't know, it's there. I think it was in the seventies. There was a, a bank robbery in Stockholm, Sweden, and I think it was over a period of three days. And what they found is that the capture, um, the, the hostages, after a period of time, were actually defending the um, hijackers. Yeah. Uh, and it's like a mental schism that goes off, whereby the the, the there is like a um, kind of an affection for the slave master or or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and this is what is happening on a mass scale. We we are suffering from amnesia. Uh, we we have been hypnotised by a spell. That spell being the belief in authority. And we we have got so far down the line with it that we've got Stockholm syndrome. This is proven by the fact of what we were talking about. A woman that pays no taxes has everything in the world, doesn't contribute in in that way, uh, and. We've got homeless people. We've got needy people, and 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 then and then when it's her birthday or she's been in, uh, she's like celebrating a jubilee. 
we're waving our silly flags like idiots. Uh, and and we, we we just want more. We just want more and more of it. It just doesn't make sense. We've got to wake up from this spell. It's a spell. We, we're, we're much better, much greater, much more powerful than they are. If we all came together and realized our own sovereignty and realized that this belief in authority is at the very basis of the problem. And, you know, here's the thing. There's a lot of attention being uh, put on these... Uh, benefit scroungers, you know, dull dossers and, and those that are the parasites of the benefit system. And yet some of the biggest damage being done to our economy um, has been the widespread um, tax avoidance, which they consider Absolutely. to be legal, right? Where all of these rich bods in this country who we go and invest or spend our money with, uh, take their profits and go and export it to a foreign bank where they don't have to pay any taxes on and that Absolutely. and that causes more damage to our economy than any of the benefit scroungers or dull dossers across the country that people want to persecute um oh, and, it's, all, it's all the immigrants fault isn't it yeah it's not see, it's not google or or amazon or mcdonald's that are evading billions of tax each year is it <laughs> Here's the thing. Um, when I when I said at the beginning of the show that I was a uh, I was a I was a chauffeur, and my 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 governor owned his own private merchant bank. This is where I learnt about this. Now he had a bank. It was a Robert Fraser's and Partners, and it was based in Piccadilly. Um, and some of his clients were the Conservative MP. Well, he was one of the actually quite directors actually. Nicholas Soames, um, Ralph Halpin um, from the Jewelers. Um, What's his name? Jeffrey Archer. Sir Jeffrey Archer was one of his oh, clients. Uh, Robert Maxwell, before he went disappearing off a yacht, was one of his clients. Um, and the brothers, Kevin and Ian, or the sons, Kevin and Ian Maxwell, um, were clients. Uh, yet that, those, those were the type of clients that he had. Now, his in, when, 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 when Colin left the army, he was an army fella. When he left the army, he worked for a guy called, I don't know if you heard of him, Peter de Savary. No, I've not heard of him. Peter de Savary was a, a was a yachtsman um, who had an office out out in Mayfair, um, and Colin went to work for him as a clerk. And after a little while, Colin made a deal with him. Colin said, "I would work for you three days a week, free of charge, if you allowed me to use the facilities of your office for two days a week." And that was a deal mm -hmm. he had with Peter de Savary. And the two days a week is where he built up uh, his business of tax avoidance consultant that's what he was he was a tax avoidance consultant and within a short space yeah. of time he bought robert fraser's that the bank uh, in piccadilly he bought it for about five mil right bought it outright and was the, the leader the chairman and chief executive etc um, and then put his trustees committee in and i remember once right now do you remember when you used to go you, you've been to gatwick right yeah. As you come off the M23, you come up to Gatwick, and mm -hmm. then you turn right heading towards, and it was that, that's that plot of land that's now an industrial estate, just, yeah. as you, just as you go across. Well, can you remember when that was just green? Yes. Okay. So, Robert Fraser and Partners owned that land, right? And I can remember, while I was driving for them as a chauffeur, Nicholas Soames, who was one of our directors... Right, doing a doing a TV interview from that plot of land about how they were, it was going to be you know the government are looking to to make it accessible to expand Gatwick and blah. Without anybody actually realizing that they were doing that because the company that he was a director of owned that bit of land, but they, <laughs> you know what I mean. So could you imagine yeah. the amount of millions that they made? When that when they dis, when that, when that was pushed through the Houses of Commons oh, yeah. to to use that land to develop it to make the, the industrial estate that it's now become. Yeah, absolutely. I think the the great George, comedian George Carlin, I think he famously said once that, um, is what is it? Your um, there's a big club and you ain't in it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we we weren't in it. I was just the yeah. driver, and it was quite funny actually. When because I, I heard I was actually at home listening to this listening to this interview and thinking, well, that's the plot of land that Colin told me about because we'd driven past it when I was dropping him at the airport, and he told me that they owned it, so I knew they owned it. Yeah. But you know, we're talking about are you living or just existing, right? And to me, I think 
the rest of the planet, most of the planet, are just existing. Because yeah. there are far more options available for them to, to find a productive way of living that takes them outside of some of the circles that we've just been talking about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the it, it's kind of like been ring fenced as uh, what we can do, really. I mean, there's very limited options. I mean, even I feel so for the young people coming through. I mean, like, I think my generation was the last generation where you could leave school without any qualifications and still get a decent job. Um, there are options around and... You know, if you went to university, chances are you could find a job in, in your chosen field. But now, there's like, you know, you're lucky. Uni univers gonna, university is no guarantee for a job. No, exactly. But, but you know, the parents, the, 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 they, they push their kids. I mean, if I was a parent, I, I, don't, I think I'd tell them not to bother. Um, but, um, yeah, so, so, so we now, I think I read an article a few months back that there was... I think over a thousand applicants for one job in Costas in one of the London branches. One thousand applications um, for one job to, to make coffee. And um, yeah, I mean, like, I guess this is what I, I try and get across in the book. You know, we, we all know the problems. They continue to exist, the, the problems that is. Um, what are we going to do about it? And that's the next stage. It's it's like, do we? Because we're we're at a crossroads now, and I think something higher is pushing us to evolve, and really asking us to um, find some courage. Because many people are, um, you know, scared or concerned about like if there was if we were to perhaps stand on our own feet. But you know, we there comes a point where enough is enough, and like when the streets are lined with um, homeless people and the 1% are creaming off all the taxes and giving themselves pay rises and we've always got war all the time there, there's no there's never but, but any war, war, war makes money right? yeah absolutely and um, you know there, there comes a point where it's like it's like the, the, the bully in the pl pl playground analogy you know the, the bully picks on the this one kid every day and and you know it goes on day after day after day and then one day something just clicks in that kid and he just says I'm not having it anymore mm. just not having it anymore and I'm not saying we have to fight back or hit back or riot or you know anything like that or go around smashing jobs uh, windows it's it's a mindset change that I'm talking about it's a, it's it's waking up from the amnesia waking up to our true power and waking up to the fact that just because we haven't got men in dark, men and women in dark suits, ordering us around, doesn't mean that we can't, we cannot thrive and we cannot prosper, because we are at, at our full potential, I believe anyway, so so much more than what we're showing up now, Do which you know, is basically a, a, a bunch of Big Brother fans that are voting for the next house housemate in. It's yeah. a circus. A circus, and it but it's not even funny. It's not funny, and it's not funny. And we've got to wake up. We've got to wake up from this um, and realize that we we can make a difference. All of us can make a difference in our own way. That's a lie. That's a lie we've been fed because that keeps us down. That keeps us consciousness down, and it keeps them more powerful. We we have got powerful. We have got power individually, collectively. We need to lay down the lines of divide and rule, we'll realize who the common en enemy is, and we just say no more. We've got to fall in love with that word no, and we're not having it anymore. And if everyone done that overnight, you know, imagine overnight everyone said, well, I'm not paying your taxes. Mm. Okay, if one or two persons said it, why should I pay, why should I pay, t pay taxes when the Queen doesn't? Why should I pay taxes when Theresa May's husband doesn't? It's just come out. Yeah. Why should you curb? Why should you curb in a family man? Work your, I've got no doubt that you probably do, work your fingers to the bone on your time off. Do, this, do things like this to try and help the world. Why should you pay taxes and people like that that do sod all mm. not pay anything? Google, McDonald's, all these companies that are 
these parasitic these these the, the, we're talking about a parasitic infection yeah. that's what we've got if you want to lo- use another analogy we we the, 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 we've got an infection and that infection is governments corporations capitalism and consumerism yeah. it's infected society it's got into our minds and it's given us a mental disease and that's the way I see it so the book is very much about waking up from that um, mental disease that we've got into in many levels not just on authority I, I do see that as the basis but self responsibility you know I asked I asked this to people like you've got kids what are you what are you doing what are you doing when they're poisoning the food what are you doing when you know there there's people homeless around you there's no opportunities you just you, are you just sitting there watching watching um, Jeremy Carl or Big Brother not you do a lot Kevin I'm not pointing that at you <laughs> no, I but I was, it, that was the only thing that sprang to mind what what are we doing you know like everyone at the moment has to be an activist. Yeah. They have to be. We are in trouble. You know, this this isn't going to get any better. This virus is spreading. It's it's a cancer, and it's and it's taking people down. And it's taking people down with them. Everyone right now, especially if you've got kids, grandkids, should be some in, involved at least in some kind of activism. And if you're not, it means that you don't care enough about the world that your kids are going to live in and your grandchildren and that is the brutal truth of it and I don't know and I've got many friends family members that see the stuff that is going on and they're not bothered and that to me is not acceptable that that to me will be the thing that I take to my grave over everything in the world that has happened here it will be the people that do not care while this is going on around them and it breaks my heart curving it breaks my heart because i look at my little niece and nephew and i know i can look at them in the face and i i tried my best but what about other people you know and it is going to take all of us and and people are not getting involved like they need to get involved and 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 that is the real truth uh, we actually have a responsibility uh, to to create a legacy um, a legacy that, that, that we can, when, when we lay our heads down, we can actually say, you know, I, I did that, I, I did my bit, and my children mm. or my grandchildren are going to have a better life because of it, right? Absolutely. We, 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 we can't just walk on this planet and tread on all the beautiful flowers and then, you know, get to the end of, of the garden and say, right, okay, well, we, we, you know, they were our flowers, they were, they were during our time. Mm. If you want to have flowers, go and plant your own. I mean, yeah. how, how does that work? Because at the end of the day, what's happening is we're, we're raping the nation. We're, 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 we're raping and pillaging, just as the, the, the cannibals did centuries ago. Mm. right? We're, we're ripping off all of its riches. Well, we're not, mm-hmm. but we, we are because we're part of it. And if we're not doing something to stop it, if we're not part mm. of the solution, then, then we are part of the problem. Right? Absolutely. So, so for me, uh, when, when, I, when I, I, I do like, and I've, I've used this analogy before, but I love the Richard Pryor movie, none of um, trade, uh, not trade. Um, what was it called again? Um, Brewster's Millions. Okay, I haven't seen that. You haven't seen Brewster's Millions? No. So, just, just, just let, let me just give you a very quick roundup on that before we go back into your book, right? So, he's approached by this this massive firm um, who are looking after his uh, his father, his grandfather's estate, right? And the grandfather says, right, you've got you've got thirty days to spend. 30 million dollars but in 30 days you must spend 30 million dollars and have nothing to show for it right nothing you have must be worth a cent by the time that 30 days is up and if you can successfully do that you inherit 300 million right wow bit of a comedy film right so he goes off on his trek and he's now got to try and find ways of spending this money but the, the, the underwriters, the people that are looking after the grandfather's estate, are determined to trip him up and find a way of making sure that... Because if he doesn't, they get to keep the 300 million and invest it. Right? So they're doing, wow. they're doing everything that they can to trip him. And uh, yeah. his last big stance, which was absolutely awesome, right? He's going up for mayor. Right? He's going up for mayor. And his whole campaign was based on 
vote for none of the above, including him. Uh, right? uh, <laughs> he was doing TV adverts because he, he had to be left with nothing. And if he if he won the mayor, he would be, he he would have a he would inherit the salary that comes from being a mayor. So yeah, he, he had to. Anyhow, they tried to trip him up, and how they tripped him up is not the point. But the point was how he was able to successfully, right? And I know it was only a movie. But it's one that I fantasize over. Imagine if we could do that, create, recreate that in our world, right? He managed oh. to get everybody to vote for none of the above, so nobody got the vote. None of oh, none, really nobody got the vote. So I would imagine what happens then is that new parties have to be formed or whatever. But what if none of the above meant that the uh, you know? Nobody was satisfied with being run by a government that you now had to come up with a whole new formula mm -hmm. in order to go forward now because th this has just crashed. You've just had yeah. 20 million or 30 million people, whatever, have said we don't, we don't believe in this democracy. Right? We, yeah. we, we have no confidence in it. Right? Yeah. So you, now, we as a people have an opportunity to recreate a new platform in which we go forward from. And if you yeah. had an opportunity uh, to speak on how, what that would look like, what would you say, Tony? Wow. I mean, see, I, I, I don't look, I mean, I try not to anyway. I don't look at humanity at the level of consciousness that they're at at the moment. Um, you know, 90% of people are at pretty low level. Um, in terms of belief systems, how they feel about themselves, having no power, they feel like things have always been this way, so they can't change anything, they just take everything at face value. Um, when, when I'm talking about like new systems and new um, ways of being, if you like, um, I, I, I do feel like we are we are at a crossroad right now and I feel like we have, I like to look at it as an opportunity because we do have the numbers and um, I, I, I feel that in our true state, in our true nature, I mean, you, you imagine like, uh, we were talking earlier about the unity that you experienced in that sauna. Imagine that on a oh, worldwide crazy, yeah. scale. Yeah, imagine, imagine, you know, ima just imagine that, and and imagine a, a population of people that that cared. Um, we touched on that earlier that how people don't care like they should. Imagine where everyone cared about, you know, the this, the world they grew up in. Imagine that, and imagine that people, everyone had the courage and they moved out of that fear zone. That if there was a problem, that they would be prepared to face it and 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 do the necessary take the necessary action now that would be a very evolved it would be a very different society that we have today and I think it, with that kind of society which is very much similar to what we were talking about the um, you know the Native Americans or the Aborigines um, we, we can live in peace and harmony and we can you know we, we can we, we can snap out of what we've um, whatever spell we're under mm. and we'll work it out okay we've got the government aren't here to, to build the road so there's you John there's you Mike why don't you do that if you do that then Pete over there and Bob over there they'll collect your bins for two days and do you, do you see what I mean it's like we oh. can work it out I mean uh. we're not stupid we don't need we don't need government to tell us what we already know needs to be done, um, and and that's how I see it. And I, I don't know if I'll see that in my lifetime, but I, I I feel like we have to at least here's 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 one of here, here's one of my great thoughts, Tony. Here's one of my great thoughts, um, and I, I really don't know um, how this pans out with anybody else, but. People have to ask the question, without money, would we still be able to do all the things that we did? Absolutely, I say. So, the only reason people think they need to be governed is because somebody has to control the money. 
Mm-hmm. But if everybody did what they did anyway, because these were the things that had to be done, they would love doing it more. They wouldn't feel like they were under pressure. And yes, I suppose some people say, well, all right, well, if they don't turn up, it don't get done. Well, somebody else can go mm-hmm. and do it. You know? Yeah. But I still think that enough things will get done, right, that we would still be able to survive and, and prosper, right, and mm-hmm. progress and improve. You know, planes mm-hmm. would have still been built. You know, yeah. some, of, some of the greatest invent- inventors invented with nothing. They weren't mm-hmm. rich when they invented. They, they didn't have yeah. this big me- mega bank balance uh, to, 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 mm-hmm. to, to play around with, 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 with trials and stuff. They just mm-hmm. created the things that they created. But that's what we are curving. Like, you know, that's, that's a really important point. And I, I, I spoke about this earlier on, on, on another podcast. It, it, we are creative beings. That's what we are inherently in our nature. I mean, Absolutely. We, are part, we are part of creation, right? So we are part, we are part creators. Mm. Um, and like, I, I mean, this is one of the big um, resentments I've got against the system. I feel that it stole my creativity because I was stuck in that, um, that, that rat race. And, you know, I did several different jobs, banks, state agency and, and all kinds of stuff. But I never had time, you know, you know what it's like, you're working all week, you get the weekend, you just want to put the football on, sink a few beers and then just forget about the fact that you've worked so hard and, you know, your boss doesn't care about you. Um, so, you know, that's a, 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 that's a cycle that goes on and on, um, which actually led me to ask the questions about my book. Um, but, yeah, so it's like, um, yeah, I forgot my train of point there. But yeah, so so this this goes on and and yeah, I, I I got to the age of I mean it was only at the age of sort of thirty four thirty five that I re- actually realised I could write because I'd never had a time to, to to give it that attention and and I love writing now you know I'm I write blogs regularly I'm starting another book and my God like we we have so much more than just the nine to fivers. Um, and everyone has got a creative spark within them. Even this show now, right? This is your creation. You created the show, and you, no doubt, you'll get a warm feeling from that. That that gives you that fuzzy feeling inside because because you're creating, right? Yeah. And and that is that is a big part that we need to reconnect with. And I think it's a big part of the solution because the kids growing up now, I don't know, they seem to be a lot smarter. I mean, they they, they seem to reject a lot of the stuff that that we used to do when 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 I was young like they don't seem to drink as much alcohol and, and I know they've, they've got their problems but they they do seem a little bit more advanced in their thinking and you know if we creativity is like a muscle I found the more you use it it the, the more you get yeah. it's like you tap in, it's like tapping into a well you tap tap and you get a little bit but then you keep tapping and it, it just opens up and I feel like if we were to have a more evolved society and we got in touch with our in, innate um, creativity, I feel like we could create new uh, ways to, you know, um, work in harmony with nature and uh, clean the oceans up and, and do the necessary things that we need to do and, and find new ways. I feel like we're, very, we're, we're a very innovative race. We've just forgotten it. And... Um, I mean that that may be many years ahead, but I, I see that as our potential. I don't. What what we're seeing now is is at us at our worst, mm. and and I think we need a big shift. I, see, I always say there's three things, that, and I talk about this in the book. There's three things that we need to progress from where we are. Three words, and the first one is care. We need to care enough about what's going on around us. First step, we need to care about the state of the world. Um, And I don't mean care on a lower level about the bubble which is your family and friends. I'm talking about care that is affecting the the The, world of everyone's experience. The the wider community. Exactly, yeah. So the first one is care. The second word is courage. Because if you've got care but no courage, you ain't going to do nothing. Fear is going to stop you. So the courage, which again is like a well, we've all got it. Um, yeah, people might have fear, but you can you can overcome that. You you start tapping into that well of courage, you get more. 
so courage will 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 launch us into um, being able to take action and then the third word um, is imagination mm. you know if we can't imagine and this is where people get stuck at base one they you, you say well imagine a world without government oh world without government oh, I can't imagine that and then that's it that's 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 the argument over for them it's always been government no hang on a minute think about humanity imagine imagine I always say to people imagine humanity uh, with all its potential uh, uh, with put away all those belief systems of we, it's always been this way or we, we're not good enough or we don't have any power imagine humanity at its absolute amazing best you know just even make it up and then that's when you get people thinking well maybe we could do this and maybe we could do that and, and it's like yeah we could we could and we can and this is it this is what we have to we have to get away from what has been created is all that we can create and this is what these these one percenters are terrified they know we've got these creative abilities that's why that's why the arts have been so heavily reduced they don't want us in the right side of our brain you know they want us on the left side of the brain which is all about logic and reason and and there's no creativity there it's all about structure university and repeating and very analytical the right side is the is the the, the part of the brain where is which is innovative in i can't even say it innovatively <laughs> yeah and 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 that is the creative aspect of ourselves and care courage imagination and action mm. are, are the fourth word and and if we can just rediscover that but that takes deep introspection into one's own psyche as well, you know. It's a, it's a long journey because first you have to realize that within yourself. You have to realize, am I, you know, am I a slave or am I a sovereign? When I was born onto this world, what, you know, what is it, what am I at the moment when I'm paying 60% taxes and the Queen's paying nothing? Does that make me a sovereign person or a slave? The first thing is, is being brutally honest with ourselves well okay so uh, uh, maybe I, I'm in a bit of a condition of slavery here well okay is that your natural way of you know is that is that right that it should be that way well no it's not so how do you feel about that well I shouldn't you know there's no reason why they should own it all and they should be ordering us around so that's right then so you're what you're basically saying is that you're a sovereign being yeah I'm saying that and, and it just it's like working, it's asking those questions in your own mind, um, which is where my book title started. Um, are you living or just existing? Which is the question I asked myself in my kitchen about five years ago after a long day at work with an argument with the boss. Big, big um, sigh, and I just remember it clear as day. I'm not living here, I'm existing. Why is that? Why have I allowed myself at 33 years of age to just plod along like this? And I wanted to know, and then, I, and then other questions came in. Is there a God? What is my purpose? I'm here for more than just this. And, and, and then you, ask, you start asking those big questions in life and, and the answers will come to you. Um, but you have got to want, you've got to care enough to ask those questions. And then that's when that's when life unfolds. That's when your purpose doesn't unfold. It's almost like, you know, whatever you want to call it, God, the universe, something higher is waiting. It's waiting for you to to knock on the door and and say, "Hello, what am I here for?" <laughs> oh, you've come. You've arrived finally. Thank God for that. We've been waiting for thirty three years. Come in. Take a sit down. Right. This is, you know, have a look at this researcher. Read this book. And it's like it all gets get, gets given to you, and then all of a sudden you've got a picture of the world, and you know a lot I more suppose, direct. I suppose the big question you've got to ask yourself is: A, you're born, that's guaranteed, right? Mm -hmm. B, you die, that's guaranteed, yeah. right? So that bit in the middle, what's that all about? Because if that's the only two objectives that you have in life, is A to be born and B to be dead. Well, you might as well just be born and, and die on the same day, because nothing else will matter. But that mm -hmm. bit, that bit in the middle, is the most important part. What do you do with that? 
because mm-hmm. when you're born, people will celebrate your birth. But when you don't, you're not guaranteed for people to celebrate your death. Yeah. So you've got to do something with that bit in the middle. Right? Absolutely. Now, most people, most people just exist through that bit in the mm-hmm. middle. What they do is they get up, they go to work, they come back, they go to sleep, they get up, they go to work, they come back, they go to sleep, they get up, they go to work, they come back, they go to sleep. Um, and the only thing they believe they can make a difference with or impact is just that little world around their house or, or mm-hmm. their workstation, and that's it. Yeah. But, there, but there is so much more going on in the world that we could influence if we only took the time to find out what we've actually got to offer to it. Yeah. Absolutely, and, yeah, I, and, I, and I think that's where that's where people fall short because they can't see the role that they can make or they have in influencing the world. There was once there was once a story, right? And it went. And it, I can't remember it uh, parrot fashion, but it went something like this: There was a fellow who tried to change the world, right? And that, that was his one dream, right? As long as he lived, he, he was he, all all he all he dreamt of was that he wanted to change the world. And now he is lying on his deathbed, and he was reflecting, thinking back to to what he'd done, and realised that he'd actually done nothing. Uh, he'd ha- he oh, hadn't wow. been able to affect the world. And then it mm. dawned on him. He thought to himself, "Well, maybe if I'd have started up with me, I could have made a difference to my family. Mm-hmm. And then once I made a difference to my family, my family might have been able to make a difference to my street." And then my Mm -hmm. street might have made a difference to my village. My village could have made a difference to my town. My town could have made a difference to my country. And my country might have made a difference in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's very powerful. You know, because it starts with us. Yeah. You know, we're all waiting for... It starts with number one. We're all waiting for this big change to take place. We're all all waiting for somebody else to do it. You know, we we all come up with these ideas and then we sit down there and we're waiting for somebody else to implement it. So that we can say, yeah. yeah, I knew it would work. But none of us are prepared yeah. to take that, that, that risk of going out mm-hmm. there and saying, listen, try this. Try yeah. this. You know, I'm going to be the first one to go and do this because I want to show everybody else it works. It's better. Yeah. It's good. Right? We'd rather sit on the fence and continue right, shoveling the crap inside of us. Let's, let's just take it. And I'll, I'll, you know, right at the beginning of the show, we talked, you, you mentioned obesity. Right? Mm-hmm. And me and my wife has mentioned this umpteen times. In my generation, it wasn't the norm. It was out, mm-hmm. absolutely out of the ordinary to see somebody who was large and, and obese. Mm. Now, obesity is normal. Yeah. It's, the, it's the standard. You walk yeah. down the road nowadays and almost everybody is virgin on obesity. Yeah. Right? And, and, I, yeah. Don't, and I, I don't get it. It's... It's become an acceptable way to be. You know, girls, girls have stopped taking care of the, you know, and I'm, I'm not going back, to, I, I don't want the hourglass, I'm not talking about the hourglass figure or, or those that are taking mm-hmm. so much cocaine that, they, that they've got um, anorexia. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about full-bodied people, men and women, right? Um, mm-hmm. The men don't have to pump steroids to look like flipping Arnold Schwarzenegger and women don't have to eat 30 McDonald's a day to look like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I think a lot of it is. Um, I think the food is is really dumbing people down, um, particularly in the states with the GM GM. We're food. living in a microwave society, aren't we? Yeah, I mean you've got fast food business, everything now. And um, I mean, when I went back to the UK, this was another disturbing thing that I saw. Um, I walked down my high. Uh, I, I walked down the high street, and I had like um, a twilight zone moment because as I was walking down, I realised how grey everyone looked. Yeah. No one like it was like I was in a movie, like some colourless. kind of horror, like colourless, devoid of expression, devoid of. It was almost like the soul had left, and they were. De- it was like I was walking through a, a town of zombies, and um, it was very. It was like a flash in my. It was like I'm in some kind of zombie film, and you know the sun's getting blocked out um, with the geoengineering. No one's getting their vitamin D. You've got the uh, the food where no one's getting their nutrition, um, and then of course you know when you when you combine that, people 
you know, they're being asked to, to do ungodly hours, which are no, the human is not, a human being is not supposed to be grinding away in an office for 50, 60, 70 your, hours. Your a week. life, your it's life, humane. yeah, your life should not consist of going to work, coming home and sleeping, just enough rest to get you back to work the following day. That should not be what you're, what you're, you're no. Doing. No. Um, so most people are, are, are beaten up by the system. And um, they, you know, many people have got kids, they're trying to support, wages are staying the same, but the cost of living is going up. So, so mentally they're, they're beaten up, spiritually they're beaten up, physically they're beaten up. So it's a doddle to control, right? If you're the 1% and you've got a sick population, it's, it's a doddle. And, and, and unfortunately that, that is the case, but there, there are still, we still have choices where we, we, you know, if we, if we care enough to, to say, well, hang on a minute, I'm not going to part with this. This is, this isn't just my life. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to make some changes and I need to look into why. I mean, I was going down that route, Kervin. I, I, I had, I had stomach problems. Um, my diet was bad. Um, I, you know, I was I was watching junk on the TV, and 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 then I was doing the hours that you know, but all the hours that, that God sent. I was running a branch, and I, I was that. I was one of those people, mm. and you know, it can you can change it around. You you really can. You just got to care enough and want it enough, and 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 really just tap into that self love. I mean, it's like. Come on, am I really? Is this all I'm really worth? You know, do I really have such a low opinion of myself that I feel like this is all I'm worth? Because ultimately, that's what happened to me. Things have got so mundane and boring and, and depressing. I thought, no, no. I, I knew deep down that I was better than what 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 I was I was doing, and I knew I had potential. And we can all tap into that. It's just. Sometimes you have to grind it out and really, sometimes it just takes getting to such a bad place to, I mean, you see it with health, don't you? People don't, they, they, they start looking after their health after they've just recovered from cancer mm. because they've been, and, and it's a similar kind of thing. But, you know, I appeal to people like, don't, don't leave it too late. You know, I don't, if there, especially if there's any younger listeners, you know, you're, you're in your twenties or life passes by really quickly. You know this, Kervin, and, and, you know, you, you, by the time you're in your mid thirties, you, your decades are going down, and just don't leave it to chance. Like you, everyone has got a much bigger purpose than a nine to five, but you won't find it and, unless you, you care enough to 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 go down that road and explore. And, and sometimes that can take weeks and months of introspection and finding out what what works for you, what you like, what your passion is, what excites you, uh, and and, and we can do it through creativity. Um, I, I'm a firm believer of that. So, you know, anyone can do it. I I kind of I kind of go around this thought and I, I think about it. I actually haven't got a problem uh, with people who think that a certain way might be the right way to be, or providing they've taken the time to to investigate and listen to other options. You know. Yeah. Um, I've, I've I've never been a a, a sheep follower. I've ne I've never I I was a you know you sound very much like me when I was younger, Tony. I was very rebellious um, and anti-authoritarian, very much mm -hmm. so. Um, and it was because of the experiences that I had with people in authority who abused it um, when I was at very young that gave me that impression that I I just couldn't trust them and I didn't want to be like them, you know. Yeah. So I've always challenged authority. Um, Although, I, although I fully, I fully appreciate there has to be a sense of authority for us to exist. The unfortunate thing is, those that have been in, those that have had it, those that have run it, those that have been responsible for it, have misused it for so many years that it no longer means what it used to mean for us. Um, I do a lot of shows on police brutality, for example, um, yeah, as you know, yeah. stateside. Um, and one of the things that we often talk about is where's the communi community cop gone? You know, the guy that, mm. you know, that, that the community knew, that the guy that used to be able to go in there and uh, stop a fist fight and get the guy yeah. to put the knife down or the gun down, you know, where's, yeah. he, where's he gone? Instead, we've got... Well, they're, they're military personnel now, basically. I, I, absolutely. But, but what, that, that's what you've got responding to every community event. 
So therefore, mm. the community and, and law enforcement are at peace anymore. You can't trust them. And it's the same thing with our, our governments and our politicians and the people that are in power. They, they have this very same me, myself and I mentality. We don't matter anymore. So until we mm. get to, into a place where we can visually see right, that whatever's taking place here, that I matter in this. Because that's what we need mm. to get. We need to get to that point where we realize we matter. We matter and we can make a difference. We have to. Absolutely. You yeah. know? Because at the minute, what people are doing is they're repetitive robots who are following other people um, and, and, and have no beliefs of their own. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And, it, and, it's, and it's like the guy, I, I, I've, got, I've spent time in prison, so it's like the guy who, who you meet in prison, right, who's telling somebody else's story as if it's his own. Yeah. Right. The guy's been in jail for about ten years, and he's been he's been hearing this guy on the block talking about he used to do this and he used to do that. Now the guy's left the block and he's now gone to another prison, and this guy's sitting in here telling his story, right? Like he like like he was him that did it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you're building reputations on somebody else's story, um, and that's what a lot of people are doing in life. They are building yeah. their own reputations on somebody else's story. They they are running on somebody else's steam. They are living on somebody else's power, and they've got none of their own. And mm -hmm. I like the concept of your book. Are you living? Are you living or just existing? Because until you start making your own decisions, your own choices, when you start investigating and operating under your own belief system, only then will you start living. Absolutely. Yeah. Sum that up perfectly. Well, listen, Tony. Um, I want to leave you've got about three or four minutes to just wrap this up, mate, and, and, and take us home and give, give us some real selling points on the book. Um, before we wrap this up, yeah, sure, yeah. I mean, like, like, a, like, I mean, the whole train of, of what we've been talking about is just discovering our power. I mean, that that's really what the book is all about. It's it's really, you know, getting people to question authority and to step back into their own power and to realise that this whole little me syndrome is it, it, it's delusional. It's not true. Um, you know, and and we are we are very very powerful once we once we do step into our power, um, but we, we we also need to to show discernment as well. Discernment is is something that I talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, we we've got to stop taking people at face value, and you know, a lot of these politicians, what they say, they can make us feel good, but you know, they never deliver. Like we we've got to grow up. We've got to start questioning people. Like. You know, I always say to people, don't don't even listen to me. You know, <laughs> you, you you've got to do your own. You've got to we've got to start thinking critically and thinking in general, um, because like you said earlier, people are not. And um, you know, that's that's really at the basis of what it is. And 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 I hope that the intention with the book is that um, whatever camp you're in, living or existing, there 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 is still benefits um, to the book because I touch on many many subjects in there and um, you know it, it's really it's really like a wake-up call to to um, get people to step into their own sovereignty and their own power and um, I think when enough of us start to do that I think that's when the world will change um, but yeah I mean you can you can buy it now it's um, it's on Amazon it's on Kindle um, it's uh, Amazon are actually, you know, a little bit greedy on on what they take in in, in their percentage. So, uh, if you would like me to have the royalties, if you are interested in the book, you can go to my website, which is www.transcendingtimes.org, um, and you go under the book section, um, and you can order a paperback directly from me. Um, it's also available there on ebook. Um, and like I say, Amazon Kindle as well. So that's uh, www.transcendingtimes.org. Um, and yeah, I'll be writing my uh, new book, um, starting that now. I've got a subscription mailing list as well for anyone that wants to keep in touch and, and want updates on my work and it's constantly changing and evolving and, and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I just really like to extend my thanks to you against Kervin. I really enjoy your passion and coming on to your shows. And um, I think you do a great job for humanity and especially with the police brutality stuff. And, you know, long may it continue to what you, because, you know, you're one of those people that do care and I really appreciate you. 
Well, Tony, I just want to thank you for coming on the show and sharing what you shared with us today. You've inspired me today, and uh, it's been an absolutely fantastic discussion. Um, and I think we've managed to exchange some real great views that will give people an opportunity to maybe search themselves a bit more um, and see that, that they actually have got a power within that can enable them to, to, to do better, to reach further, to care more, be more courageous. And yes, discernment is a word that I, I know and utilize quite a lot because we, we're not supposed to take anything that everybody says at face value. We've got to research. We've got to, we've got to check it out. Um, the, the, for me, the, the, you know, the spiritual word says, Tastes, taste and you will see. Um, and uh, you've got to taste. You can't just take somebody's word for it. You've got to try it out for yourself. So, Tony, I just want to thank you for coming on the show. The show will be available, uploaded on YouTube very shortly. Uh, we look forward to catching up with you again and wish you all the best for all the work that you're doing out there in Thailand. I got it right in Thailand. Yes. Right. <laughs> all right. um, and I just want to thank you for, for, for sharing this time with us. Thank you very much, Tony. Thanks a lot, Kevin. You take care. Okay. You take care, mate. God okay, bless. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Do you like music like this? Yeah. 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 Or like this, this, this. The music you love Maybe this Great music that makes you want to turn up the volume Loud Or life check like this Especially this, where human life is concerned Surely, sooner or later people will realize That lives actually matter Then you're in the right place Keep it locked to World Jam Global Where music is harmony Music, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year Yeah, you're a World Jam See live schedule. See live schedule. Oh, once again, I just want to thank Tony Sayers for an absolutely fantastic and frank discussion. Are you living or just existing? I pay for my crime. That's the name of his book. I already did my time. I pay for my crime. And I will try and put around some links so you can find out where that book is available from. I already did my time, I paid for my crime. I already did my time, I paid for my crime. Don't forget you can catch me tomorrow morning on my Wake Up Everybody Sunday Gospel Show. I didn't really care about the system, it was all about survival. It was do or die, I had too many rivals. I was too young and foolish to stay in school. I learned my lessons in the streets, there was not a man I couldn't beat. I was good with my hands and very quick on my feet. I was swimming in women, I had girls all over the street. I was getting money, life is so sweet. Now things have changed, the whole game has been rearranged. I'm a change man. That really was a great discussion. It ain't about being no gangster. And if there's anything that you've learned today is that you don't have to be robotic. Try to cope with this living hell. Search your inner self. My time. Look for the truth. Already. You haven't got to settle for second best. There is so much potential lying down inside of you. Already get my time. I pay for my crime. Boy, John Global Radio. This is classic. Already get my time. I pay for my crime. I want to say a big thank you to our producer, Teresa. Helping putting the show together once again. I was a drug dealer, sold more drugs than Superfly. But I never got high on my own supply. I'm not proud of what I had to do. That's why I'm telling my story to you and you. I had to repent, I must admit. I was doing all kind of stupid shit. Now, you missed the first 10 minutes. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties that we had at the beginning, but we got it right in the end. That's the most important thing. Brain was so numb. I was a real My name is Kervin Julian. This has been another edition of Issues Today on World Jam Global Radio. Alongside my guest, Tony Sayers. I'd chew you up and spit you out like a real alligator. Talking about his brand new book, Are You Living or Just Existing? And just a reminder, you can you can get the ebook or get a copy where Tony can get the uh, the um, royalties on www.transcendingtimes.org. Uh, we'll try and put a link up there for you later on on uh, issues today. And I think if I was you, I would I would that's where I'd go to go and find the book.
www.transcendingtimes.org That's his website. You can also keep up with his blogs or vlogs as they call them now. To all of my friends. Video blogging. Vlog. There was not a man I couldn't be. Words I was out my my This is clarity. We're out of here. I was swimming in women. I had girls all over the street. The street. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was.